member, Dr. Reese from California, for questions. Thank you. I once again uh, respectfully disagree with the implied accusations through these assumptions. Assistant Secretary Egren, to ensure that it is abundantly clear for the record, I'd like to quickly walk through the efforts you and your colleagues at the department have made to work cooperatively and constructively with the select subcommittee this, this Congress. Could you briefly explain how many productions of internal documents and communications you have made to the select subcommittee during the 118th Congress? Yes. During the 118th Congress, we have made 35 productions. That's one approximately every 10 days for a total of over 10,000 pages. So one out of 10 days, you've been working with this committee and producing these productions. And that's a total of how many pages? 10,000 pages. 10,000 pages. And you've made these productions on a wide range of topics, spanning from federally funded research to the process of reopening schools to the authorization of COVID-19 boosters. Isn't that right? That is correct. The department has also worked to make a dozen current and former federal officials available for more than 80 hours of testimony, correct? That is correct. And in this select subcommittee, your staff has worked to facilitate the testimony of former CDC Director Rochelle Walensky, Assistant Secretary for Global Affairs Lois Pace, and your testimony here today. Isn't that correct? That is correct. Okay. And just to confirm, you've made all of these efforts on a voluntary basis, correct? Yes, all of these have been voluntary. As ranking member of the Select Subcommittee, I've called for a focus on the forward-looking work of preventing and preparing for future pandemics since the outset of the Congress. But instead of doing this work, our first hearing of the new year is focused on creating a false narrative. The implied accusations based on these assumptions that we, we, we hear of obstruction for Republicans' partisan gain. So let, let me be clear, this is not putting people over politics. This is putting politics over people and the critically important work of preparing for future pandemics. So Assistant Secretary Egren, while we have you, um, I'd like to discuss this work, including the department's ongoing efforts to implement provisions Democrats passed in the 2023 Consolidated Appropriations Act. What steps has HHS taken to strengthen biosafety and address national security threats in biomedical research? Thank you for that question, because we are working diligently across the department and across the government to implement those provisions. That includes making sure we are looking at education, we are looking at um, coordination, and we are focusing on the investments that we, that we, Congress gave the department and we are deeply appreciative of. And what steps has HHS taken to prevent, control, and respond to the emergence of zoonotic diseases? Congressman, we have followed similar steps, and one of the things coming out of the COVID pandemic and other lessons learned is really looking at how we do better at data collection and coordination across the department. You know, I think that's very important to, to really emphasize here because, again, right now, the truth of the matter is, is that there is no consensus as to whether this leaked from a lab or whether it was a zoonotic origin. And the point is that we should be focusing on what the administration is doing to help prevent a future pandemic, whether it's a lab leak or whether it's zoonotic. Uh, and that we should really systematically bolster our efforts to really prevent uh, the spread of emerging uh, viruses that can cause devastation like COVID-19. So let me, let me ask you, are there additional ways, thinking forward-looking, concrete, pragmatic, solutions-oriented ways to, that Congress could support the department's ongoing efforts to prevent and prepare for future pandemics? Congressman, thank you for that question. And I think one of the best things Congress could do is reauthorize PAPA and the support that that provides to states and lo local governments for response, as well as the investments that it makes and lessons that are learned from COVID and other pandemics on how we can be better prepared in the future. Thank you. I, I hope that in the remaining time, which is actually less than half of the time we have left this Congress, 
the select subcommittee can change course and focus on the constructive bipartisan work of fortifying our nation from future public health threats. And with that, I yield back. I now recognize